Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. We're glad to see you here. If you're a visitor with us, we give you a warm welcome and invite you to share your names with us at the door. If you're worshiping with us at home via Facebook, again, welcome, and we pray that your participation in our worship service this morning, and as we come together in Christ's name, uh, it may better your week and enrich your lives. There are several announcements in your bulletin, and we encourage you to take a look at those announcements and respond accordingly. Are there other announcements to share from the congregation? Peace of Christ be with you. Sorry, one more. So, yell, you gotta yell, Steve. <laughs> uh, please forgive me for omitting some important information from the bulletin, which is that assisting us in our intro this morning is Emily Walters, a flute player. And what a sound. So enjoy Wednesday. Thank you, Steve. Yes, one more. Yes, Emily. I'll try, Tom. Um, Easter extravaganza on May, March 23rd. This will be a, a breakfast, Easter-related events open to the congregation and to the public. Um, there will be need some for some donations of items for make your own Easter ba goodie basket. Uh, but though you'll see all that in the church news. So mark your calendars. Open to all congregation and community as, as well, and it should be a, a good a good Saturday morning. Other announcements. I think we did the piece, didn't we? Yeah. Okay. All right. Opening hymn.
Please join me in the call of worship. God meets us in the night. God meets us in the light. Where joy is ever present, where laughter is contagious, where flowers bloom from cracks in the sidewalk, and where people gather around the table. God meets us at the threshold, at the edge of the water, at the beginning of the wilderness, at the start of something new, on the edge of faith. And if God meets us in all those places, then surely God meets us in between. Let us worship the God of here and now. Let us pray. We pray that once again you would meet us here. Meet us in our hope and in our heartache. Meet us in our fear and our joy. Meet us in our cupped hands and clenched fists. Even if the water keeps running and we do not have a scar, sky parting moment of clarity or a tangible sense that you are near. Even if we do not hear the words, this is my beloved, ringing in our ears. We will trust that you are near, always and forever, meeting us here, running towards our hearts. Amen. This is our time to share with the children, so we'll invite the kids to come up. <laughs> she had a shorter distance to go, Wyatt. And Carol Foster is going to share with our kids today. So, Indy 500, huh? <laughs> I don't know you. What is your name? Callie. Callie? Callie, I'm Carol. It's very nice to meet you and have you here. You probably know everybody else here, don't you? Yes. Good morning. And two of us have our babies with us. What is your baby's name, Lily? <laughs> she just grabbed it from the nursery. Oh, be named. <laughs> well, you can give her a name. What would you like her name to be? How about Leanna? Yeah, I, I'm going to give her a name. What's your baby's name? Do you want me to tell her? No, I don't want my baby as a name. Well, this is Blakey. She's asking about this baby. No, Blake. Oh, your baby's name is Blake. Well, I think that's very sweet. Okay. Well, I'm glad to see all of you. What sports do you guys play? You just finished basketball. Do you play any sports, Gia? I think dance is It is. It's very athletic. Yes, dance is definitely a sport. Callie, do you play any sports? But I bet you do on your own. Bet you like to run around, climb things. Well, what's important to do before you dance or play basketball? Okay, okay, you do, yeah. And what did you two say? Stretch. Stretch. Get, warm. Get warmed up, yes. The choir does warm ups. Did you ever hear them? Yeah. yeah. We don't do jumping jacks. Although we're going to have Mrs. West lead us in some jumping jacks this week, okay? <laughs> And, and Emily was playing her flute this morning, and you warmed up a little bit too, didn't you? Well, you know what? We started a season this week here. Wednesday night, we started a season. Wednesday was Ash Wednesday. Yep. What season did that start? We're going to have it for the next 40 days. <laughs> Yes, it does. Oh, oh, oh. oh this is hard. <laughs> Rhymes with mint. Lentil. <laughs> yes, you're very, very close. And lentils are good to eat, too. Yes. It's Lent. 
And you know, there's purple banners hanging down from the pulpits, because Lent has its own color, it's purple. Or violet is also called. Do you ever pick violets in the springtime? Yeah, pretty little flowers, and sometimes their head kind of bends down and it reminds people of some sad times during Lent. Well, Lent is kind of a warm-up for a very important day. Want to take any guesses? Yes, warm up for Easter. And it's so we can get ready for Easter. There's a couple things we could probably do during this warm up for Easter. You want to make any guesses as what we could do to get ready for Easter? Well, what does this, does this help you remember? Yes, we can pray. We can say to God or Jesus, I'm sorry, I really messed up today. I was kind of mean to this other kid in my class. They wanted to play with me and I told them I didn't want to. They could say, I'm sorry. That's another way we can get ready. Warm up for Easter, for being a better person. And some people fast during Lent. Do you know what fasting means? Can you have dessert anytime you want it? For the, no. Wow. So you kind of have to fast, not have that dessert when you want it. I knew a great man, Debbie Hubbard knew him too, our friend Paul Benjamin. Didn't he fast during Lent? There was something he, what was it he wouldn't eat? Chocolate. Paul would never eat chocolate during Lent. And I always thought, wow, what a guy <laughs> to not have chocolate for, it's about 40 some days long, but he did it. Well, we could give up other things besides chocolate. We could give up, what's something you could give up? No, no, Wyatt, don't say that. Can't give up chocolate. <laughs> you could, you could. Give me some ideas. What could you give up that wouldn't be terrible? Grandma Martin says you could give up fruit. <laughs> what a hardship that would be. Oh, what else? Ice cream. You could give up hitting your sister. I think that's a great <laughs> idea, Wyatt. Yes. Mom likes that idea, too. Well, those are just some ideas. You could also give something. You could give somebody a smile. Maybe there's somebody that you normally don't smile at, like your sister. You could smile at her. You could say, gee, Rosalie, your hair looks nice today. She probably would wonder who you are then, wouldn't she? <laughs> but these are just things we can do to warm up for Lent. Get ready for the Easter celebration. Just some ideas. I don't want to give you guys up for Lent, though. No. But we talked about you could pray for Lent. Let's have a prayer right now. Oh, Jesus, thank you for giving us time, time to think about all the things you gave up when you left this earth, but to think about all the things you gave us while you were on earth. Help us, Lord, to have a good week, to give something to somebody else. A smile would be wonderful. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, boys and girls.
My friends in Jesus Christ, again and again, God calls us, God meets us where we are. God's love knows no bounds. God's love is hard sometimes for us to appreciate because it is so great. Therefore, we come to God with our shortcomings, <clears throat> with our hurts, with our need for God's presence and redemption. Let us Pray together the unison prayer of confession, a responsive confession. God who meets us where we are, there is nowhere we can go that you are not. You were with Jesus at the baptism. You were with him in the wilderness. And even in between, you were there saying aloud, this is my beloved. We know that you are with us too in the good, the bad, and everything in between. But so often we act like we are alone. Instead of coming to you with our heart, we will live in them and cast it on to others. Instead of coming to you with our joy, we dread ourselves and offer you nothing. How can we long for a deeper relationship with you while living like you are nowhere to be found? Forgive our selfless ways. Remind us that in every breath, in every step, you are there. You are the God who meets us where we are. Before and behind, above and below, within and around. Amen. Let us join in a moment of silence and private prayer. Friends, hear this. God is here. God sees you. God knows you. God meets you at the edge of every new beginning, and God calls you beloved. We are washed by the water. We are called beloved. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. This time we're privileged to welcome the new members to the congregation. So let me invite uh, Janice Martin to come forward and to have uh, Debbie and uh, Ginger join us. We've lost Janice. Oh, I think she's lost. Talk among yourselves, whatever. Smoking if you got We'll get her. <laughs> Oh, 
else could do that. Yeah. We have this problem in theater too that <laughs> this entrance is. Everything's going so smoothly this morning. Yes. I apologize. <laughs> we were just getting to the part where Jesus walks on water. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the session, I present Debbie Hubbard and Ginger Candle, who have been received into the membership of this congregation by reaffirmation of faith. Debbie and Ginger, you come to us as members of the one holy Catholic Church into which you were baptized and by which you have been nurtured. We are one with each other, sisters and brothers in the family of God. We rejoice in the gifts that you bring to us as you join with us in the worship and service of this congregation. It is fitting that together we reaffirm the covenant into which we were baptized, claiming again the promise of God, which are ours in baptism. Hear these words from Holy Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Debbie and Ginger, our sisters in Christ, our baptism is a sign and seal of our cleansing from sin and of our being grafted into Christ. Through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Christ, the power of sin was broken and God's kingdom entered the world. Through our baptism, we were made citizens of God's kingdom and freed from the bondage of sin. Let us celebrate that freedom and redemption, the renewal of the promises made at our baptism. I ask you therefore to once again reject sin and to profess your faith in Christ Jesus and to confess the faith of the church into which we were baptized. So here are these questions. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the way of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, answer, I do. I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, answer, I do. I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple? obeying his word and showing his love? If so, answer, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. My friends in Christ, you have publicly professed your faith. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. And to the congregation, do we as members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture Debbie and Ginger by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging them to know and follow Christ and to be faithful members of his church? If so, please respond, we do. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you for calling us to be a servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for choosing to add to our number brothers and sisters in faith. Together may we live in your spirit and so love one another that we may have the mind of Christ Jesus our Lord to whom we give honor and glory forever. Faithful God, you work in us and for us even when we do not know it. When our path has led us away from you, you guide us back to yourself. We thank you for calling your servants Debbie and Ginger to this fellowship of your people. 
Renew them in the covenant you made in their baptism, and by the power of your Spirit, strengthen them in faith and love that they may serve you with joy to the glory of Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome to this congregation and its worship and ministry. Welcome to this ministry. The peace of Christ be with you. Welcome to this ministry. The peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. This is our time to share joys and concerns. Mm -hmm. We direct your attention to those listed in the bulletin uh, who need your prayers and support and the note about June Lea Party who could use a few cards and best wishes. Other joys or concerns to share with us this morning? Dave, I do love Dave. Yes. weather that they are facing right now is just beyond belief mm -hmm. and they're having quite a, a tough time with so much flooding. So appreciate some uh, concern for all the people in that area that are being flooded. Keep the people of Los Angeles and California in our prayers with the rains and the floods. Other joys or concerns? <coughs> yes. Birthday is today. Todd's. Todd Webb's birthday is today. Yeah. Happy birthday, Todd. Great. Other joys or concerns? Let's pray together. Almighty and gracious God, in whom we live, move, and have our being, we praise you for your gift of life, for the renewal of life each day, for the beauty of our world and the challenges we face. We ask that you walk with us each and every day to help us be good stewards of your planet, to help us be good neighbors to each other, to be people of faith who live in love with you. Gracious God, we thank you for special days in our lives, birthdays and anniversaries and baptisms and births and all those things which help bring us together in community. We thank you for new members. We thank you for faces who uh, are familiar and faces who are new. Lord our God, be especially with those who need your care. Those who are sick, those who are mourning the loss of a loved one, those who are confined to a bed or to a room, those who need a, a sense of your guidance as they face difficult decisions in their lives. We remember those who are victims of violence and pain, both in the home, in the street, and in the, the, in the midst of war and strife. May your peace-loving people work for peace, both here and throughout the world. And Lord, walk with us in our discipleship as a church. May we serve you and serve each other in the spirit of Christ, using the gifts you've given us and using the opportunities you present. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together by saying, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be, be, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our first lesson comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 9. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants, after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth. With you as many as come out to the ark, I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow into, in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring the clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on earth.
Our second lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out of the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Please join me in prayer. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This year, our theme during the Lenten season is again and again, a Lenten refrain. It's based on a Lenten guide provided by the creative people at a website called A Sanctified Art. It's lectionary based, and again and again will be our theme throughout these many weeks of Lent into Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and Easter. Lent reminds us that again and again, suffering and pain break into our lives. It reminds us that again and again, we see a world plagued by anger, hate, war, and injustice. During Lent, we see that we sometimes fall back into old destructive habits that we thought we had put away a long time ago. In frustration, it's easy to cry, again, O Lord, again. Yet God, does not remain silent during Lent. He offers us a sacred refrain. I choose you. I love you. I will lead you to repair. Again and again, God breaks the painful human cycle and offers us ways forward. God's clear invitation can come in the midst of chaos and the indifference of our time. It can be heard above the clamor of the streets or the noise of the media. And one way that we can keep finding God's presence is through community, community with each other and community with Jesus Christ. And you know, keeping community is not easy. There are many distractions. Yet time and time again, we're called to be together. We're called to be in community, even when it's a struggle. And we're challenged to love God and to welcome each other. A sub-theme of our again and again is a Lenten refrain. And it speaks to the way that God can make music of our lives. In music, a, a refrain is a part of a verse repeated time and time again. And it adds special emphasis to the music, the hymn, and the song. And just as music and repetition helps shape, mold, and strengthen us, so our Lenten practices can make us more faithful in our discipleship. The rhythms of Lent both renew renew the message of forgiveness and grace, as well as lead us into new understandings of God's presence in your life and in mine. You know, throughout human history, people have either experienced the presence of God or have spent a life searching for God or have concluded there is no God. Those who have been seeking the presence of God in general have had a certain spiritual longing. 
And we found that there's many ways to search for God. You can hear the words of others who have experienced God in their lives and hear their testimony. You can read scripture and other sacred texts and devotional writings. You can join in worship with others. You can, as Carol mentioned, you can join us in prayer and meditation. You can fast, Paul Benjamin giving up chocolate. You can experience the holy in many different ways. You know, even scientists have tried to either prove or disprove the presence of God. And even the Soviet Union asked its cosmonauts to look for God as they orbited the earth. Today's theme is God meets us. It captures one of the central truths of both the Hebrew and Christian scriptures. It tells us that the Bible is not much about the search for God as it is about God coming to us, reaching out to us. Our Christian faith affirms that God is the creator and sustainer of all life. We're created in God's image and into us God breathes the breath of life and God created our world and all that is in it and we are to be stewards, caretakers of that world. More than this, God seeks a relationship with us. We're called to be God's people in community. God reaches out and God meets us where we are. The Reverend T. Denise Anderson is a former moderator of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA. And she tells us of her own faith journey. She wrote, my personal story is, though my family wasn't very churchy, that I somehow came to religion in my teens. And I came to my denomination, the Presbyterian Church in the United States, when learning about the Reformed tradition of which that church is a part. Reformed theology emphasized God's initiative, which is, which is consistent with my experience. She writes, I can't tell you that I ever really found God. It was God who found me and kept finding me throughout my life. Whether I was observant or indifferent about my faith, God was always close by. That's also the testimony of scripture. God initiates a covenant with Abraham and Sarah. I will be your God if you'll be my people and if you will journey to a new land and I will make you the parents of a great nation. God spoke and called out Moses from a burning bush to lead his people out of the slavery of Egypt and to a new land. God initiates, God equipped, and God enabled it all to happen. And then there was God calls to the prophets, people like Samuel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Elijah. And then in the person of Jesus Christ, God blessed us with forgiveness and grace. Jesus called disciples. God invites all to follow him. And the risen Christ intercepted Paul on the way to arrest Christians and called him to be an apostle to the Gentile world. And Paul's witness was that God meets us, all of us, regardless of gender or sex or nationality or social condition. That's a challenging message in Paul's time, and it's also a challenging message for us today. So many of us are tempted to see our own selves as special in God's eyes, and so there's a fear that if God is indeed accepting ones who are very different from us, somehow that diminishes us, reduces us, and, and lowers our, our standing in God's community. The account of Noah and the great flood in Genesis is one of those very well-known stories in all of scripture. Years ago, when I was pastoring at a church in Pennsylvania, the church received an offer from a non-member in the community to provide us with a wooden ark 
and wooden carved figures of animals. They said it would be a great way to teach the story of Noah in church school. The kids would love marching the animals up the gangplank and arranging them on the deck of the ark. Sounded like a good gift, so we accepted sight unseen. When it arrived, we were gracious, but we were shocked at its size. This was no ark you could put on a table or a shelf. It was huge, and it took up one-third of one of our classrooms. Janitor first said, where am I going to store this? And we never found a suitable place, so it remained taking up one-third of that small classroom. And in a way, the story of Noah and the ark was always with us in that room. <laughs> the story of Noah is a very simple and basic story. Most of us know a good part of it. From the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the garden, the human community had spiraled downward. Cain kills his brother Abel. Wars break out. People resort to violence and hate. Greed becomes common. The building of the Tower of Babel is a sign of human arrogance and pride. And finally, God regrets having created mankind at all. God calls for a great flood to wipe the world clean of the evil of humanity. Yet God can not give up on the human community. He can't give up on the animal life he has created. And so a remnant will be preserved. And so God reaches out to Noah and his family, build an ark, gather two of every kind of animals in the ark, and be prepared to ride out the storm and the flood in the ark. Well, the ark and all its precious cargo survives for 40 days and 40 nights. The waters finally recede. The ark rests once again on solid ground, and earth is once again populated by humans and animals, and it flourishes. And this is usually where the, the story of Noah and the ark ends in most lessons. But just more, and we find that more in the passage from Genesis that John read for us this morning. God calls Jonah and his family together. God makes a covenant with them, a covenant, a contract, an arrangement, a promise, God promises never to destroy the world again with a flood. And as a sign of God's promise, he puts his warrior's bow in the sky. That we know is the rainbow today. And it's not a sign just for a particular people, but it's an everlasting sign given to all flesh, all humankind. God will remain close and available to all, not just to a chosen few. For we have an inclusive God, a God that has special care for all people, a God who loved the world so much that he sent Christ into the world to redeem the world, to give life, abundant life. And God meets us, God meets us, God meets us again and again and again. All of us experience God in perhaps different ways. Some have always had an awareness of God's presence since their very early childhood. Others tell of feeling close to God as a child and a young adult, only to lose that feeling in adulthood and find it again at some other point in their lives, especially later years. Others experience the presence of God after a traumatic event in their lives, a bad accident, a life-threatening illness, the violence of a natural disaster or war, floods in Los Angeles, the death and loss of a loved one. Others, however, are still looking, still seeking, and God is there for them as well. And there are those, one of the mysteries of our humanity, who have never searched or who have abandoned the search. And yes, that's just part of human diversity. But for those who have experienced God, those who are searching for God, God is present and God reaches out. God can meet us where we are. 
can meet us time and time again. And God seeks to be with us in relationship, in a loving relationship, in a caring relationship, in an empowering relationship. And God seeks that time and time again, again and again and again. Thanks be to God. Amen. And go now in peace. May the blessings of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be and abide with you this day, this night, and indeed forevermore. Amen. <laughs>